All right. Yeah, so it's two minutes over three. So um, I suggest that we get going for this webinar. So first of all, I would like to thank you all for joining this webinar that is organized by Oracle Customer Experience together with our partner Engagement Factory. And um, first of all, I would just like to introduce us, the host, and then uh, here you see myself. My name is Michael, and I am working with Oracle Customer Experience. I've been here part of the team in Amsterdam for a bit more than a year. And uh, prior to Oracle, I had experience from Hilti and a B2B sales background, but also in marketing. And my reason really for joining Oracle is that with our customer experience platform, we are able to like support companies with a connected customer experience. And this is really something that we see is quite helpful for companies. So this is a bit about myself. Um, the other host for the webinar is Roland from Engagement Factory. So I'll give the word to you, Roland, and uh, you can kick the webinar off. Thanks a lot, Michael. Thanks for introducing and uh, welcome to you all on the call today. Um, and happy to talk you through the presentation today. Um, I bring over two dec decades of sales and marketing experience uh, across various industries and always been focused on generating leads and turning leads into deals, which becomes more and more difficult if we look at a lot of developments that we're going to touch upon in a minute. Um, so I love working in this domain, uh, especially the crossroads of sales and marketing, uh, where I think a lot can be gained and, and a lot can be done to not just improve customer experience, but in the end also drive your business results forward. And hopefully we have an in, a lot of interesting examples to share with you uh, and to get you some further inspiration during the session uh, today. So how are you able to get the most out of this webinar? Well, stay tuned for the coming 45 minutes or so. Take some notes. We're going to share the deck afterwards as well as the recording. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to submit them in the chat box. Uh, we'll keep a track on them and then uh, answer them at the end if they haven't been answered yet. Uh, and for the rest, just sit back and get, in, get inspired. So uh, we're gonna do a brief introduction and then taking a deep dive into what's changing in the buying process and really having a look at uh, what the key challenges are nowadays. Um, then we're gonna have a, have a look at some in inspirational best practices where we've selected a Philips case, which is around modern marketing, an Adlon case, which focuses more on the service process from a marketing perspective, and then Bright Mill, which uses a number of these methodologies, but then to really fuel their internal process. And I think all of them can benefit you as an organization, whether you are a small startup or a big scale enterprise, I think all of this thinking and methodology and technology can really help you move forward. Uh, and then we're gonna sum it up and, uh, and have some time left for, for Q and A's. So the webinar is brought to you by uh, Oracle together with Engagement Factory. And if I, if I see what we look together, then really about enabling your modern marketing approach, preferably on an industry specific basis. So bringing in our knowledge and solutions that we've gathered around all these industries around the globe, uh, and then using software and services that really can impact your business. We do it on a global scale, so with a global vision, but with local support, local feet on the ground, uh, local knowledge, and also um, making sure that you work best in your local environment. Uh, and of course, based upon the extensive marketing automation experience, expertise and experience that we bring along. Um, what we see in a day-to-day -day basis is really a number of challenges which come down to that in this era, maybe even in this digital era, there's a lack of integration. If you look at integration between systems, processes, people, and data, and there's really a lot of issues going on with the result that the customer experience is not as good as, as, good as it should be or as it could be. Um, so, And I think with the more technology that we put into play, the more difficult it becomes to really integrate things for the best possible customer experience. Um, so and what we want to do in the end really is drive conversations that really deliver engagement, which is all about the right message to the right person at the right time via the right channel. And that's not just about content, it's also about context. So we need to know which person are we addressing in which context 
uh, in which context to send them the right message. And I think a lot of people sometimes get stuck into just doing content marketing and thinking that they're done by just pushing out more information. But nowadays we're in sort of a, let's say a content tsunami where there's more content being produced that people can ever consume. And it's not just something that, uh, let's say the young people are facing with, with consuming all these social information, et cetera. But it's also that a lot of people across businesses are coping with. There's Everyone is fighting for attention. Uh, and the question is, when are people spending time um, on your content and your, uh, your information? Only when it really serves this idea and helps them to drive further engagement. And if you want to do that, you do not have to be just customer focused. You have to be customer obsessed. And being customer obsessed knows, means that you know everything about them, everything which really uh, is in their minds and, and, and adapt to those changing behaviors. That's the only way that you're able to succeed. Otherwise, just stuck in that big pile of information which is poured on them uh, and they have to find their way through. So the way that we look at it is, is applying this demand manufacturing wheel, which starts with your client in the very middle and call them a persona. Because by understanding your client, understanding your personas, uh, you know what really drives them, what motivates them, what their goals are, what their objectives are, but also what hinders them in achieving their success um, and how they play a role in a bigger decision process. Uh, especially in B2B, you know, more and more people are involved in the decision-making process. So which role do they play and where do they go for information? What type of information are they looking for? Who do they, do they trust as being their trusted advisors? All of that information is really vital to determine a good, to get a good understanding of your persona as well as their customer decision journey. So what are the steps that they go through in determining what, what the next step could be? If you then follow the model on the right hand side, then you see that once you've determined that persona and the journey, you're able to craft out the themes that really relate to their information. So it's not about the information I want to push, it's about talking about topics that my client is interested in hearing. And that sounds like a simple one, but if you look at a lot of companies, they focus on what they want to communicate instead of what their audience is interested in hearing. Once you've defined those themes, you can have a look at your content and see what type of content you already have available, which might need some updating or changing or, or recycling, or which is missing and should be added to answer all those uh, information requests from your client. Um, if you miss some information, you can do some content creation and then put it all together into uh, vivid campaigns and then push it out to market. And of course, measure what the results are to further improve it. That's the model on the right hand side, coming back to the persona and then with some continuous improvement. On the left hand side, you also start with the persona and the journey, but then have a look at okay, what type of uh, people are I actually looking for? So, who uh, do meet my elite qualification criteria? Um, so, apply lead scoring to see which ones are. Um, really engaged with me, fit my profile, ready to hand over to sales, and which ones of them need some further nurturing first. Um, the ones that are ready to go to sales, do a proper handover to sales, as we call the sales handshake, and of course also here do reporting on what worked and what didn't work, and improve from there on. So this is li literally a model that you can start working with, and then take it step by step and keep on improving along the way. As I said, it's not just about doing a bit of content marketing, it's a combination. So of course, content marketing is key because you need to be able to uh, conveying the right message to build that, that engagement. It also requires a lot of organizational change um, and applying the right type of technology. And um, there's no lack of technology, understand me there. Uh, the reasons that we see where people are not able to get it to work is because they sort of forget to do that organizational change as well. So what is required in a new way of thinking, both from a marketing perspective, from a sales perspective, from a business perspective, to really get this all working. Um, so it's, it's a healthy combination of doing content marketing programs, focused on your lead management and demand generation process, and then leveraging your marketing technology infrastructure to, to meet those needs. What we've built in the past is a modern marketing maturity model, which really takes you step by step through adopting uh, modern marketing. Um, 
which of course has a portion of it around market automation, but also the change of your processes and the way that you use your data and your personas and your content and the alignment with sales. Um, it has 10 steps in it, and I still have to find the very first client, which already is at level 10. Um, and some want to jump directly into level six. We always say, no, please start with the basics. You know, make sure that your database is correct, that you have done your very first simple campaign, maybe as simple as it is, but really get it started. And from there, build it on. Earlier this year, we've done a, an extensive webinar uh, series where we covered all these different um, phases in the maturity model. Uh, and also took deep dives into parts of it. So we had one specific session on personas and, and uh, content marketing, a specific session on sales and marketing alignment. So if you're interested in those, um, have a look at webinars.engagementfactory.com uh, and, and review those as well. Also, there is a, a model marketing coach app available that we developed, which helps you through this process step by step. So it helps you to you know, it pops up a number of questions to determine where you currently are and also serves some uh, steps uh, from there on to, to move on to the next level. So to give you some further inspiration of this, you know, what does this theory look like in practice? Uh, as I said, we brought a couple of, of uh, examples with us. Um, first, uh, starting with Philips and Philips lighting currently being rebranded into Signify uh, is a great enterprise best-in-class example um, and no matter if you're a small company or a large one you will see interesting things in here that you can apply to your business as well it's just like you know companies like Philips have to, um, uh, they can spend enough resources to develop this and what we want to show is that you can put them to work for you as well in a very easy way to get started so the approach really here was um, we developed a persona and I will dive into these in a minute um develop the campaign strategy then work from the selecting of themes like you will recall from the demand generation wheel that i just showed before um, then had a look what type of content we needed and what needed to be created uh, and then make sure that we had the lead routing in place and also took care of lead acquisition so the background here really is that uh, philips's world and signifies world is changing uh, because light used to be just a light bulb in the room but now it's there's a, a sensor in it which tracks which tracks if there's someone in the room or not, and with that, if you connect it with Internet of Things, all of a sudden light becomes a source of data, and that really changed the way that that Philips had to look at their business as well. So the request to us was, can you help us to set up a full funnel digital campaign which looks at acquisition of leads, engagement with with contacts. Uh, creating the leads in the process and handing over to sales and in the end also resulting to sales. Where the issue really was that Philips was focusing on a total new audience where they were switching from we deliver light bulbs to we deliver data and we are part of the Internet of Things. They realized that especially for larger organizations that their main focus should be on the head of corporate real estate. So imagine if you are a Fortune 500 company with huge amounts of square meters of offices, then getting insights in the 70% roughly that is used um, will help you to do a lot of cost savings. It would also help you to drive future way of working within your organization. Um, but Philips had, a, had an issue that they totally were not aware of this type of persona and what their main priorities were. So they first needed to get a good understanding of that. Then we were asked to introduce the new Internet of Things proposition ending in uh, leads and sales to be created. So we started with a deep dive in this uh, head of corporate real estate. So then we do extensive research. Sometimes it's just sitting with a bunch of people in a room, spending half a day trying to get understanding. Preferably it's literally going external, doing interviews with people to build a persona around a certain role. And in this case, the head of corporate real estate. Where we have David, uh, 53 years, uh, has. 40, 50 people reporting to him. He reports to the CFO. Uh, you can see some things with this where one of his quotes was, you know, anything that helps us collect accurate data on occupancy over a prolonged period of time is something we would certainly want to look at and be interested in. It's not just this rough description, it's really diving into details and getting a further understanding of what, you know, what his uh, main issues are and where he's looking for a type of information and who he trusts in his in his buying process and then we found out that he was interested in topics like 
sustainability and of course cost savings and also workspace design so that's really what you need to do discovery for and i would say that in the end is, is one of the basic existing reasons of existence of marketing uh, but a lot of people forget this that you truly need to understand your your prospective customer to better serve them so then when we had that understanding the idea was okay we need to drive website visitors first to start with then the ones that land on our website we want to translate them into subscribers so we make them from unknowns we want to make them into knowns then get engaged with them and then uh, translate them into leads so the campaign strategy from the left hand side a reading started with some social advertising display and events together with search engine advertising search engine optimization and driving people towards a low branded website around your let's say um, uh, workplace optimization in that website we had a couple of themes and based on the interest of people we tried to convert them into notes so if you're interested in topics like sustainability theme two then we will serve you a nurture track around that very specific topic and with that we build up on that engagement uh, and in the end receive uh, resulting into marketing qualified leads sales qualified leads and preferably in the end also sales so during the, all that research we discovered a couple of themes around alternative workplace strategy real estate optimization and what have you the issue is that Philips is not an expert in all of these uh, topics. So we went to external experts, for instance, around real estate optimization and had them provide us with insights that we could use throughout the campaign. Then we put together a huge amount of, of, of assets uh, with landing pages, emails, follow-up emails, uh, follow-up landing pages, uh, gated content. So you really have to make yourself known before you receive that kind of white paper. And all in all, it was a, a huge amount of, of marketing assets, but also uh, sales assets like a sales PowerPoint and an overall campaign playbook that was used internally to get a good understanding of how we go about this. Um, and of course, one of the important thing is that make sure that we have the lead routing in place. So it's not just about marketing and driving traffic towards the website. It's making sure that we capture those and serve them the best possible route internally to any and also make sure that we fuel the sales team. So that's an example which focuses on marketing and sales process. Another one uh, is more focused towards service and also leveraging this kind of thinking and understanding uh, in a service campaign. And um, there's something that we did for Atlon. Atlon is um, uh, a car lease company where one of the things that they cope on on a let's say ongoing basis is changing from winter tires to summer tires and vice versa and the initial setup was just an email which was sent to the drivers but it was just too much effort as of the reader and i talked in the beginning about this content tsunami and content overflow if if i don't if, if it's not clear to me what i have to do immediately i'm probably going to skip it and nothing happens so this was just too difficult to scan in only two seconds it was one large block of call of text little visual support no real clear call to action so what should i do next and very little personalization with the result that the customer service center still received a lot of calls of people okay you know i need to change my winter tires yeah but we sent you an email or well, i missed that one or it was not clear what i need to do so we had a look at it and also better understanding the client, we tried to increase the customer friendliness of the communication, focus on getting more appointments planned digitally, and also uh, while we're, we're at it, also offer digital, better digital service, resulting in less calls to the customer service center. So we did a full redesign where the call to actions are immediately visible and also by chunking the information, so make it more easy scannable, um uh, and also visually pleasing to read there's also a reminder service in it so it's you can imagine that you know you don't send off one email there is a series of emails so reminding people if they you know they saw the email they know that i need to change tires but i didn't have my schedule at hand so once the reminder pops in oh yeah i needed to schedule that one pick it up again and also collecting feedback service on okay this was this information valuable for you or not uh, we also, for the lease uh, drivers, integrated useful content on the corporate website uh, from this very campaign. Results speak for themselves. Um, very high uh, unique open rates. 
um, a very uh, positive re uh, uh, reception. Uh, there's a bottom, there's a thumbs up, thumbs down uh, button on the on the uh, bottom of the email, uh, which caught very very well. But more importantly, we saw that a lot more appointments were planned uh, via this channel, with the result that the driver desk, the service desk, had much more time to focus on other uh, and maybe the more difficult type of questions instead of just scheduling some time for people to um, change their change their tires. Which brings me to um, the final example, which is much more around an overall internal process. Uh, so we work with Brightmail, which is a company over in the Nordics, and they have a great business model where they um, uh, select and, and, uh, and hire out uh, temporary managers. So it's a healthy business uh, with only two people that started it and still only two people running it. But it's growing heavily because people are continuously looking for good managers to help them out and all these interim people and it really takes time. So what they saw is that they were spending a lot of time maintaining their own database, chasing candidates to update it because they have to know if person X was available for that type of job and if not, when he would be available so they could make sure that he has another assignment coming up again. So the solution that we did is that we implemented marked automation, which didn't seem like an obvious one initially, uh, but we integrated it with their CRM because in the end, their main clients are their candidates. Maybe their candidates are even more important than their actual clients, because if you don't have the candidates, you're pretty sure that you're not going to have the business as well. So we made sure that we fueled the marketing automation platform just to do that and link it with their CRM as well as their website and also added an SMS function to it. So you literally get an SMS personalized from the director of the company asking you to update your data so they can make sure that you're lined up for your next assignment. Um, next step is also to set up automatic com communication. So on a regular basis, update your resume, update your availability, and, and also if you maybe went into a long uh, assignment or switched roles, you, know, you, remove, you remove yourself from the database. And with that, their database healthiness is, is much better. And as a result, they freed up a huge amount of time that they can now spend on other, on other types. So let's say the basic stuff around managing their candidate database is highly automated by using something like market automation. Uh, and with that, they can focus on the next step in taking the business further. So all of that is done by leveraging the Oracle Marketing Cloud, um, where in basics, if you look at one of the, the possible solutions, Oracle Eloqua, um, which is a best-in-class market automation platform, very robust content tool that you can use to drive that better customer experience. It helps you to manage your campaigns, uh, like you've seen uh, in the couple of examples. It's also really geared towards doing that lead management. So some people might think it's an email marketing tool, but then you don't uh, leverage the technology and the facilities it has around lead managing. So capturing, scoring, managing, routing leads to really follow up on them. And as I always say, you know, creating leads is interesting. In the end, it's about deals. You know, we, we serve sales and we need to have that process in place the best way possible. It also helps you with targeting and segmentation. So collect data so we can build our ideal audience and also tailor our information towards them building upon the content marketing so planning producing delivering the content that we really need across our various personas and channels and have that available within the system and because it's an open platform it also helps you to connect with other systems um, usually in integration with crm speaks for itself but we also see integration with other systems or developing applications on top of for instance voucher managers or mobile engagement or around even deeper content management. The way of working is, is really intuitive. It's like, you know, drag and drop um, your, your campaign steps uh, in there. Uh, like I wanna send an email, I, there's a waiting time, depending on the results, you either end up in this website or get this reminder follow up, etc. cetera. Um, these are fun to build, starting really simple and then building, in a, building them out into huge, very advanced uh, tracks that you can improve over time and keep track of what's really happening. What you also see is that you know building lead scoring is a very intuitive and a simple way. Um, because 
uh, that's initially when I was in, in on the business side decided to implement Eloqua to keep track uh, and get grip on my inbound leads. You know, if I get 3,000 leads from a very good uh, uh, performing download of a white paper, where should I start? So, and by applying this kind of thinking, you get a good understanding of which ones make most sense to spend the time of sales on, which ones are not yet ready and should be put in the hand of marketing team or into a nurture program before we really should hand them over. And also not annoying a client after they just downloaded one white paper because they might not be ready to meet with you yet. So looking at key takeaways, I think that the road to success really is a journey and you should go about it one step at a time. So it starts with you know, taking time to pause and really assess where you currently are. And that starts with looking at your client or your prospective client and their buying process. It's not about your selling process or your go-to market approach. It's about what type of information is your client looking for and how can you earn the right to sell to them. And usually that is by serving them valuable information which helps them in their decision process. Um, I'm a big fan of, of a number of uh, podcasts. One of it is, is the Marketing Book Podcast. I highly recommend that you dive into it as well. It's marketingbookpodcast.com. Um, and I, I heard one quote recently there, which I still really like. It says salespeople, but also marketing people are sort of professional mind make uppers. You help people to make up their minds. So you help them in the decision process. And that starts with really understanding them and helping them in their information need. Um, we have the Mortal Marketing Coach app available, so I gladly invite you to, to download that and start using it. And also, if you have a look at it, don't rush through those levels. You know, do things properly. Start with the basics. Don't think, well, you know, data is not really that that important. Let's get our first campaign out. Then probably the campaign will not have the effect that you would like. Rather start with a healthy, good, a cleaned up database a well thought out campaign and then go over that step by step. And when it comes to that content piece, um, you know, content marketing is really a buzzword, um, but make sure to focus on facilitating smart conversations that really drive engagement instead of just pushing out the next white paper or uh, webinar or infographic or whatever. And of course, you know, if you like some help on this, we'd love to help you uh, get further into your modern marketing and sales maturity. So with that, um, I think we uh, we might have rushed through it, but uh, interested to see if we have some questions that uh, popped up that uh, I might be able to answer as well. Yeah, and I will uh, help you with that part. Well, and first of all, I'd like to thank you for taking us through your view on modern marketing and sharing some of the best practices from your clients. Um, yeah, everyone on the uh, webinar, you're welcome to submit some questions free at the chat function. We have already received a few, so let's start with one here. It's um, the Philips case looks great. Where do I get started to get near to this level? Yeah, I can imagine if you're, if you're new to this, you might think that you know this is just one bridge too far or maybe a couple of bridges too far. Um, and I think you know I, I've underlined it a couple of times. It all really starts with truly understanding your market and your clients, your prospective clients. So it starts with being customer obsessed to really know what drives them and how you can align with that. Because only if you offer valuable contribution to the buying process, you can earn your right to sell. And if you do that, you can get your first campaign going and grow then step by step from there. Uh, so we have the pleasure of working with Philip for a number of years already, and we are still improving. And if we start with a new business unit, we always start again with the basics. You know, get a very simple campaign out, which can be a welcome campaign for people that are new into the database or which is around an event uh, and just get started with it. And once you've got your first campaigns going, then have a look where you can take it from there. It's really going step by step. All right. I think that answered that question. And I see we both have B2B and B2C marketers here in the room. And we got one question relating to that. It's is this the same for B2B and B2C companies? Yeah, good question. I would say in, in essence it is. Um, you know, there of course are differences. Usually in B2B you encounter more complex buying processes, but also in B2C you also have those when, you know, what we, what we call considered buying. People 
if it's not a really like a, a, I am in store, I see something, I want to buy it right now. No, but if it's about buying a car or buying a house or buying a new kitchen, all of those purchases really require you to give it some thought. And, and, and if you need to give it some thought, then apparently you are in a need for information. So this way of working really applies to both. What we also see is that mostly in B2B, uh, companies are more sales driven, wherein B2C companies are more marketing driven. At the end, we're aiming for the same goal, which is driving more business. And um, unfortunately, we, we, we see a lot of, let's say, disconnection between sales and marketing. Um, so I would urge everyone to really team up uh, with sales and marketing together and have a look at how you can best serve your market and with that best achieve your goals. Exactly. All right, I think that's all for now. There's one question about the slide deck as well. So if participants are interested in the slide deck, how do they get that? Yeah, so we'll, you will receive a follow-up email tomorrow, uh, which has a link to the slide deck uh, in it. Uh, and we will also be sharing the recording of the session afterwards. So if you think, well, I'd like to listen back in uh, again or share with someone else, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, if you have specific questions um, uh, about the content, uh, also feel free to reach out to me or one of my colleagues, either at Engagement Factory or our friends over at Oracle. Uh, and of course, everyone will be very pleased uh, to help you uh, on this interesting journey. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Roland, and thanks everyone for participating. Have a good afternoon. Thanks. Same to you. Bye-bye.